What's going on everyone? So it's another uh, weekend out here. Um, so as you can tell in the background, the shop car is back. Um, we had to go up and get the car. Um, we have a timeline we kind of need to stick to on getting things done so we can be ready to race relatively soon. We still need to do brake lines, um, plumb the inside of the fire system, um, put the windows in. Just a lot of odds and ends that needed to get done quickly. Um, so wiring isn't 100% done. Um, so I think the plan is we're gonna finish the wiring, or we're gonna finish the fire system, brake lines, and get everything we need to get done and then uh ryan's gonna come back down and finish it um hoping the wiring was gonna be done by now but that's just how things work out sometimes um yeah we had kind of had a timeline we were trying to stick to and didn't happen how we'd like it to um but that's how things go these are really complex machines so it's not like you can just throw this stuff together in, you know, a couple weeks. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to get working on brake lines. It'll take me a minute. Um, not terrible, but just routing things how I want. Might take a second, but I'm going to get started on that. Um, kind of show you guys what we do to run brake lines. Um, hopefully a few tips in there that maybe help you guys out along the way because it's not the most enjoyable experience. <laughs> Um, it's kind of frustrating sometimes making the right bends at the right time and because some of these you can't do off the car they have to be done on the car and yeah you gotta make things work so I'm gonna get to it so I thought I'd show you guys uh, some of the stuff we use to do some brake lines and move this stuff out of the way so um, currently I'm gonna be doing the back first just because it's a little easier and I like doing the easy stuff first leaves the challenging stuff <laughs> For later on, I guess that's procrastination, but, um, so right now I am putting this T up in here. So, um, this is kind of a thought process I had. I was going to put this T somewhere like right here, something like that, but I kind of like to have brake lines even. Um, if I put it here, you know, this brake line's a little shorter. Um, I don't know if it matters. I've always had the theory that it matters. I'm sure there's some hydraulic class out there um, that would tell you that or calculations I'd tell you that, but I'm gonna stick this in the middle. That way we can split them evenly. And I'm just gonna loop this back around and follow this tube down here. I'm probably gonna go down this one. Let's see if I can show you guys. Down this one, over, down, and then right there where you can see my finger and it's gonna come through and it's gonna poke through right there and then we'll run it along this along the rocker and then up um, to the master cylinder in there so this one's not as bad um, it shouldn't be terrible but I did forget to weld a tab on that bar for this so I might have to grind a little off and weld a little tab on there um, but this is like the stuff this is the stuff you forget about and you don't think about before you start you know fully going to town on it um, so anyway I'm gonna be using stainless lines this is just like summit brand um, brake line 316 stainless steel I know people use the Nikop stuff um, stainless steel is really not that bad to work with it looks better, I think. Um, the NICOP stuff is nice if you have really tight areas and you can't get a bender in there. It's a little easier. Um, but anyway, I think it's I think it's easy to work with. Um, this is a tube straightener. So this will take that tube that's in a coil and it'll make it straight. Um, kind of got to work it a few times, but not terrible. And then this is a 37 degree flare tool. I think it's from Rigid. Um, and that makes your AN style, um, dash three style flares. And I got a bunch of fittings over here and a bunch of fittings on the other side. So I'll, uh, 
I'll show you guys the straightening. And then, actually, I'm going to put that fitting in there. I'm probably going to have to weld the tab. Um, I was hoping I wouldn't have to. I was hoping we wouldn't have to weld any more on this, but that's how it goes sometimes. So hopefully you guys can uh, see up in here all right. I know it's kind of dark. Um, let me see if I can get this light any... There, hopefully that's a little brighter. I know it's dark under here, but... Uh, so we... Uh, I pretty much just make measurements um, to get a rough estimate on length of um, brake line and then I just go and cut it and then just start bending. Um, I usually like to have a little extra at the end just in case. Um, so what I'm going to be doing, I don't know if you guys can see, so I'm going to be running from this brake line, right from this brake fitting, up over probably under the bottom of this and then over to that T I just welded in, um, or welded the tab for. So it's got a, quite a few bends. So I'm basically, all I'm gonna do is just take some guesses, um, you know, kind of measure out where I think it's gonna land and then, uh, you know, just cut something and start working with it. And I'll kind of show you guys what uh, what we do to bend it and uh, how I make my calculations because it's not very precise, but it's uh, it works really well. So some quick calculations came up with about 66 inches of, um, brick line. So I'm gonna have to open up this new one and we're gonna have to roll it out um, with a roller to make sure it's all um, straight or at least somewhat straight. And then we can start bending it. I just use a small hand bender to get this uh, how I want it. 66 is pretty long. Um, probably gonna have to, yeah, it's tough cause there's so much stuff up underneath the rear. It'd be nice to do this without the housing in there, but I'm gonna try and do it with it in there. Um, but I did get that fitting in there, so that's what I'm going off of. And then, yeah, we'll work on forward. So we're just going to do from basically main hoop back right now. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to uh, roll this out and the best way to roll it. So, like I said, we got like 66 inches to go, so it's quite a long run. Um, I think this is 25 feet, so this will probably be about the longest run. Um, just because it's so many different bends. So pretty much just feed it through here. This is this knob on top tensions the roller. So uh, I kind of just start loose and just kind of start working it through. So I think you start getting bigger circles and bigger circles. So get to a point where it works pretty well. You kind of have to bend it down when you're going through to keep it straight. Um, obviously, it's not going to be perfect. Um, just because of the nature of it being in a tighter roll. But let me just work it back and forth. So I get something that's straight ish out of the coil, and then I'll cut the coil, or I'll cut the line out of the coil, and, uh, and then work it some more just so I can get it somewhat straight. So all I use is a little, uh, just this little cutter. It's just like a, uh, I guess it'd be it for brake lines, but you can use it for other stuff also. The stainless is a little bit more difficult to cut, <coughs> just because of the nature of it. table's a little bit of a mess because we got John's car finished up recently so we've been kind of taking it apart and putting parts away and stuff like that so all right so that's my rough 66 inches um, so now now that I can work it better I'll run it through here um, and just make sure it's 
somewhat more straight. A lot of times not going for like total straightness on the whole thing. I'm more going for like if it's got bends in it, just so it looks better. Some of them are hard to get out. So once I get it down where I want it really straight, I do tighten it down pretty tight right through here. That's about straight. So it's still got a little bit of a curve in it, but it's not bad. Um, since we'll be working with it, it's going to get some bends in it, just the nature of it doing it in the car so I'm gonna start doing I gotta flare one end and then we just kind of start working from there all right so down here on the floor which is not ideal working conditions but it's the only place where I can lay this thing and not have it flop all over um, so basically what I have here is what this bend is I just cut a small piece off because I needed to know a certain dimension I usually don't do this but because I had a 180 plus this 90 I wanted it to be like perfect so wanted to aim for that um, so now that I have this I basically just held it up here like so you can kind of see it's kind of hard to hold set it up there and then I just measured to where I wanted to bend up here so I have that mark right there at eight inches and uh, I'll bend to 90 and then hopefully that'll get it running across here I may be able to stick it in there now so as long as it's not long enough to hit the other side but I'll stick it in there and see uh, see how close it is. As you guys saw, I, I was able to actually stick it up in here. Um, and it laid out pretty nice. I wish I want this to lay a little lower. So I think I'm going to try and put a little bit of bend on this bottom. Hopefully you guys can see. <laughs> put a little bit of bend on this bottom uh, to get the whole line to set up a little higher or a little lower. This is the hardest part about doing this is doing it in the car. Um, obviously it has to be that way, but um, it's just not easy because there's hardly any room in here as it is um, to try and do this. You guys might not be able to see for a second. That's where I wanted it to land, just like that. So, um, just like that. So, now that it's kind of laying where I want it, I can make the next bend, and hopefully that'll put us um, a lot closer to where we need to be. All right, so I got the uh, <clears throat> brake lines all fabbed up. Um, just basically did what I talked about earlier and uh, just kind of keep going and working it and uh, marking your bends. Um, yeah, they are pretty much done. I'm going to put an extra little bend on these so they're not they're not sticking down like that. I can hold them to it. Um, but yeah, they are pretty much on there. And now it's pretty much just main hoop forward and working on that. All right, small update on the uh, all the plumbing that we're doing on the brake lines and the fire nozzles. Um, it's currently Saturday night, and I started on the brake lines um, and fire bottle stuff, I think last Sunday. So that kind of gives you a time of how long this stuff takes. <laughs> um, I The only nights I haven't been out here is Friday and I think Tuesday night. So it's really time consuming stuff, um, but it is getting there. The, you guys saw the rear brake lines. It's really dark in here now, but you guys saw the rear brake lines. Those are pretty much done. Probably gonna put another, um, probably put two bends in here to bring this up against the frame rail because it's a little bit of a gap. It looks weird. But <clears throat> inside the car, um, this one is coming through here. It'll get tied up here. Um, 
with little clips. Uh, I'll probably tap this and then just set those in there. So that runs, it's kind of a hectic mess in here right now, but that runs up here <clears throat> under the fire, under the uh, towel, I mean, up against the firewall, and then it runs into the master cylinder. So a little tough to get this all in there. Um, kind of have to make a few bends that are you can't visualize. So um, these will get, I think these are gonna get tied together right here once wiring is done. Um, probably use this bolt that's coming through from the rife sensor um, to hold these together and then um, one of those obviously going down to the line lock TBM line lock um, fire nozzles well I guess I'll keep going on brake lines um, I am waiting on one fitting this fitting up underneath here is a bulkhead but I want to do a bulkhead nine or bulkhead T so one bulkhead will be sticking through here the other will be going this way and the other one will be going down to the line lock so we can run a line from this uh, T all the way over to the other side over there. So these brake lines are all ran the front. You can see that one over there. Um, those are wrapped up. The fire nozzle, all the fire nozzle um, lines are ran on the front. Obviously these are going to get tied up. These are still just kind of loose. Um, that one's tied up underneath there. So they just kind of pop through on this firewall right here. But I got all the interior ones done. So I guess I'll give you guys a, uh, a recap here. Um, so the auto block for one of the bottles, which the auto block will control all the inside um, nozzles. So that one is this bottle over here. Um, this is a fire aid, 20 pound system. One's on an auto block, one's manual. So, it, and then you can activate the auto block manually also. So, um, that is these two nozzles here. So one right there, it's pointed at the transmission tunnel and needs to be brought up a little cause the wiring is kind of close. I'm not a huge fan of it spraying straight at it, but, um, it's got a pretty good angle. So it's, it's aimed at the transmission tunnel. Um, <clears throat> I have one down here, kind of spraying at my crotch, <laughs> but, uh, it's kind of, you know, it's spraying more of my middle body. Um, and then I have one on my feet right here, and then there's one up right there, spraying down. So I have a pretty good amount. I have three nozzles on me, um, pretty good amount going on. <laughs> so, um, those are all ran. These are ran up with the wiring. This one's looped, um, obviously get tied up more, but uh, this one, those two are tied into that like that. So kind of a madness of um, running lines, but other than the one brake line across the firewall um, and then the one down to the line lock, the brake lines are done. Um, I ordered the soft lines so we could run those and then I mean it could pretty much get bled and then ready to go the so I'm currently working on the longest run so sorry about my mess on the table um, I've been going kind of hard on this stuff but this is one run that I'm working on currently um, all of these bends on this one are um, all just measurements so I kind of have a few bends I have kind of this 40 which was this original bend here that I've been using to mock up I do have a 180 and then I have a 45 degree that's in the car that I'm mocking up right now so on the this one is going to the um, this one's going to the under hood nozzles um, so it's running down this bar down across and then it's going to run um, down the tunnel and then up. And then there's going to be a T, which will split between where this one is up underneath there. And then this one right up underneath there. So a um, little bit of a long run, a little difficult to do. Um, so it's going to run down here and then down and then up on the firewall and crossover. Not too terrible. Um, 
just a lot of kind of guesswork and making a lot of measurements. So we did get a few new parts in, got our fire core wires in. These are all custom length um, tucked down. So these will all be tied back like that. Um, should be pretty easy to get to them all. Um, but super simple to order from them. If you guys need anything, they are, it was like a 10 minute phone call. And I was like next day or the day after shipping. So really great product. And then I'm sure some of you have already noticed, um, Bosher Raceworks valve covers, of course. Um, the other ones I had, <clears throat> they worked okay. They were not the best at being able to locate the hardware. Um, you could get two if you like held one and then held the other with the other hand and kind of set it on there on top of the um, studs or the uh, post mounts or the little posts that stand up that are threaded. So, uh, yeah, I, I reached out to Doug and said, I need a set of valve covers. So they are pretty badass. Um, yeah, I, I can't complain. They are great. They are way better than what the other ones were. Um, the other ones were more budget, but uh, if I had to put those on in a rushed type uh, scenario, like on the side of a road or at the track in a hurry, uh, they were going to get thrown across the track. So I was avoiding future frustrations that was going to come from that. All about making things easy, and those were not easy. So, um, and John was out here painting. I would have had a little bit more done, but John was out here getting his car done. Um, give you guys a little bit of a, uh, it's a little bit crazy in here cause he was out here painting. So, um, yeah, you guys get to see a little bit of a sneak peek for the, uh, weekly wrap up. So he got it all painted, um, pretty much ready to go. I think he's ready to just bolt things back together. So that'd be kind of cool. See it actually on the ground. So we'll, uh, we'll show you guys that another video. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm working on. I'm going to get that fire line. I'm going to try and get those two fire lines that are done off those tanks and get them ran forward. Um, and then the fire nozzles will be done and I'll be so excited because I'm tired of doing brake lines and all that now. So uh, yeah, I think that's about it. And then uh, hopefully tomorrow we can run some fuel lines. I think that's fuel lines and oil lines. That's the only thing. Only major stuff left other than all the wiring getting finished up and that's supposed to happen next weekend. So um, kind of in a little bit of a crunch, but not too terrible. So I'll get to it.